What, what qualities do you think are most important in a good barrister? Well, clarity. Um, <laughs> says she not not being <laughs> very um, clear in what she's thinking because I'm trying to think round the subject. But I fluency to some extent, not 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 necessarily because um, you have got time to think. But preparation is tremendously important, um, particularly if you're arguing law. Mm. And different things, uh, uh, trying to get evidence out of witnesses, um, you're tremendously good at it. I'm sure you'd know exactly what to do yourself mm. because... But you have to be able to guide people without suggesting the answer. So you've got to be clear that you're doing open questions and not leading questions. But um, also working out beforehand what the issues are, what, what the important points are in evidence what you want to stress and how you want to stress it. Having some sort of plan, but being um, flexible enough to change it. And you certainly can't plan all your cross-examination of witnesses because you've got to be open to adapt to their answer and see whether you should press further or whether you should leave it at that or whether you, you're you never going to get the answer you want and if you press you're going to get them more and more sure that they should stick to what they've said and not mm. <laughs> and not say well perhaps I'm wrong or mm. you, you don't get that reaction mm. so um, Humour? Is humour important or not? I think it's possibly quite even more important if you're in a criminal case and mm. you want to captivate the jury. Mm. Um, on the whole, judges prefer to make their and funny judge. remarks themselves. <laughs> um, preparation. I, I, early on, when we did undefended divorces and the law was quite different, um, the judge who um, sat in the High Court, he was a county court judge, they, they all sat as special commissioners in the High Court, um, used to love teasing young barristers with white wigs and therefore would say, oh, what about Section 34 or um, have you considered the, the law in such and such a case? And they were both well-known traps, and he'd ri he's written funny books about it. He, um, <laughs> the name's gone. Yeah. Can you stop? Um, how, um, how did you come to Cambridge? I mean, was that before you met Ken or after you met Ken? Oh, no, after, because of Ken. I only came when I was married. I, how did you meet Ken? I met him at a New Year's Eve party. Um, a friend of mine um, was sharing a flat. It, uh, this was after. Yes, I was in my. I think I was in my pupillage. I'd qualified and was in my, my pupillage. And a friend from university had a, an old school friend who was at Newnham and they were having a New Year's Eve party and she'd said, you know, bring people who are around. Ken, at that time of the year, wasn't going home to South Africa and he was friendly with one of the others and he was brought along and that's when I first met him. And because my first pupil master had been from Port Elizabeth, where he'd grown up, 
um, we we talked a bit, um, and he was still eating dinners at the bar, and he said, you know, oh, well, you know, perhaps we'll meet for a coffee sometime if you're dining at the same time. And I said, okay, well, you know, let me know. And thought not much about it, and he wasn't a dancer, and there was some jiggling around, so I danced, so I didn't uh, take all that much notice, except thought he was a nice young man. Mm. Was he at King's then, or not? Yes, yes, yes. 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 Um, he was... He, he was doing an affiliated degree, he'd got a degree from Rhodes first, so mm. he was in his second, his tripos year, mm. doing part two. And we did meet up uh, after our meal, because he was in Inner Temple and I was in Middle Temple. And we went for a cup of coffee and then we went home to our respective homes. Mm. But then he did phone up some time later and ask me. We went to a film together. Mm. And then I visited him in Cambridge and then, you know, it's sort of. That was five years till we got married. <laughs> so <laughs> so <they> were, gradual, <laughs> careful. It was, um, yes, quite gradual. Now, I did go on a holiday with him and uh, his friend Rodney, mm. uh, who was a lawyer as well. Um, and then I went to South Africa once, and then we had a year when he was doing his fellowship dissertation and we didn't see each other because he wanted to concentrate on it and then when he'd, he'd finished it we went out together and then we got married he, he got a fellowship on the fellowship dissertation did he or? yeah yeah i think uh, noel had earmarked him for they'd been waiting for a lawyer to noel annan yeah yeah, yeah. Noel yeah. Annan. So give me give me a little Pen portrait of Ken. Of course, I knew him towards the end of his life a little bit. Um, he seemed a very, very charming and warm sort of person, quite driven, um, hard working. Perfectionist. Mm. <laughs> um, yes, lovely. Um, very warm, very um, highly intelligent. Um, so many things um, yes I have to <laughs> come too many things <laughs> too many things yes. he, was, he was very obviously very uh, public spirited I mean he supported yes. a lot of people and yes and and wonderful at his interest in other people um, full of questions. Mm. I think that was one of the first things, I, well, one of the things I noticed early on, that um, he always wanted to know more mm. about people, about what they were doing, about how they were. Um, and, and very empathetic mm. about it, but also, um, quite rigorous in, you know, not being judgmental and seeing. I think one gets trained to that as a lawyer too, mm. that there is bound to be another side to any story. Mm. So um, you you don't make judgments quickly. Did he practice, I mean, he taught law, but did he practice any law? I mean, he um, did a pupillage. Mm. Um, and it was always a bit of a joke that during his pupillage, and he got a, a highly academic one in a way, um, but got a case in the Privy Council that was, you know, got a mention in the law reports mm. long before I did. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and mine wasn't a personal mention in the, in the law reports. I had mm. a reported case or two, but not a... Mm. 
I think I think coming back to my side my father was terribly excited when somebody had pointed out that some nondescript little criminal law case of mine had a, a, a three-inch report in the news of the world of all places. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was best forgotten. <laughs> I did get a case in the law reports uh, while I was still at the bar. And that was a rather silly one. <laughs> when you when you came to Cambridge, um, did you actually come to this house or no 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 oh. we um, we got a, um, the first year we had Ken's colleague who was made a fellow at the same time as he was um, Jim Turner. Hmm. Um, and they'd got a flat in Croft, uh, Croft Gardens mm. and were going off to California for a year. He'd got something there. And we moved in. They'd finished it and we moved in for a year. And then um, St Edward's Passage oh. became free. Uh, it had been... It which, which number? 17? 17B, the B. top one. And that was absolutely marvellous. Okay. Hal and Heather had moved to a house. Mm. They were mm. the last people, and um, before them, the Annans had had it. Mm. Um, and it had this wonderful roof garden mm. where you could see, you could go over the steps and see out onto the chapel roof. I've probably told mm. you this I've before. seen the photo, yes, mm. that you took. Mm sitting and you had plants in, in yes, sort of yes. boxes there didn't you? And, and chairs and mm. found a few more photos of that I'll mm. try and get together. Who was in the flat below you, 17B? It was still Didier Lop Lopakovas. Was it? The mm. Cain's Cain. flat mm. and then halfway through when she gave it up bef just before she died um, Tony Tanner and Marsha had it. Ah, Tony right. and Marsha Tanner. Mm. Until they moved into the thing. But we were there from 196. We married in 61. We were there um, 62 to 68, and that's mm. when we moved here to this mm. house. Mm. And I moved into that flat in 1971. Oh, right. 17B. So someone was between us. Yes, someone was thinking. between. <laughs> <laughs> Who, I mean, you, you obviously overlapped with a lot of King's mm. people, both there and later and elsewhere. Mm. Mm. Um, were there any particular friends you had in the college or knew people you knew well? Well, the Browns came to live next door to us. Dan Brown. And the other side of this mm. wall. Mm. Um, and we'd bought it from the Williamsons. The Browns, I'm seeing her this evening. Are you? Um, Margaret. Margaret. Mm, give her my love. Yes, I will. Um, who else? Well, I mean, you know, people Bernard Williams, I suppose. Uh, yeah. Yes, me, Bernard and... Uh, Pat. Pat. Mm. But also Shirley. Mm, did you? Mm. Yeah, we went we went to dinner there because she was very interested in in the um, was it in the garden house case or the Dutchka yes. case? Mm. One of them. She mm. she'd asked she'd asked to get some background to mm. it. So yes. Um, who else? I mean, the, the, Ken helped ever so many people, so we did see quite a lot of different people. Mm. Um, uh, you always uh, knew all the old people, Peter, name, Aver Peter Avery. And Peter Avery. I was just thinking of the Argentinian couple, um, the Lefs. Yes. Arie and mm. the names come back, Arie. Mm. Mm. Um, I remember him quite well. And, and Wynne Godley and all these people. Yes, yes. Mm. I mean, well, how did you 
Uh, colleges are often accused of being rather neglectful of wives of fellows. Did you find that with Kings or? No. Um, well, y yes and no. I mean, for the first three years when I was still working as barrister in London or elsewhere, wherever, um, it was tremendously useful that I, I sort of spent probably two night, two or three nights away, never more than that. Um, but Ken could dine in Kings and, mm. you know, I didn't need to worry that I was mm. neglecting him or anything. Mm. Um, and then going in to dine was when they were able to take guests in mm. who were wives. Um, was a very mixed business and I, I wasn't altogether sure I wanted to unless mm. it was well the beginning the occasions were worse than anything because you know Founders Day having uh, I only did it once um, you were allocated to one of the wives who would give a dinner party for wives mm. and then all the dinner parties would congregate and you had to go into the gallery and have dessert and wine uh, and you could listen to the speeches which you couldn't really hear and you could see the tops of the heads of your various <laughs> partners. Yes, I heard um, about these strange things. Very strange. John Saltmarsh was organising them, I seem to remember. One was enough. Mm. I mean you know, it just seemed so false. I'm sure it was a very nice dinner, but uh, I do remember and she had Donald her own asparagus beds, so that was something I hadn't come across before. Um, but uh, Donald Parry was probably oh, Dan Donald Parry was a great mm. friend, and mm. the Ravens, of mm. course, yeah. um, John Raven and Faith. Mm. But la later, you found it a um, little more welcoming or yes yes and you know there were quite a few people like um, Naomi what's her name oh, I, I can't think of names I'm sorry mm -hmm. but there were people who've moved on and moved mm -hmm. away and um, more friendly mm -hmm. yeah but there was also the thing that if you went in on an ordinary night or a wine night for a wine night for example you could be sitting next to someone who was fascinating and it was really interesting to be there and you could find out a lot and learn a lot or else you could be sitting next to somebody who'd been working with one of their research students and they'd come down and dinner was just a continuation of conversation mm. and they hardly noticed you were there mm. Mm. Um, and the person on the other side of you who was being perfectly charming no doubt also had to mm. speak on both sides mm. so and talking across those tables Hopeless. is pretty impossible mm. yeah yeah so it was a mixed business mm. and, and so I've always felt a bit reluctant. I mean, I, I have dining rights as mm. a member of High Table, but I wouldn't go in unless I knew someone who was going. Mm. Um, because I'd feel intruding. Mm. Well, we must go in together sometime. That would be <laughs> nice. Um, when you came here, you changed from being a barrister to a solicitor. Did you? Changed before I got here because when we decided after we were married in 61 and I suppose we made a decision sometime in 63 that we because of my age particularly um, we didn't people didn't wait so long as they do mm. now um, we wanted to start a family mm. and so Um, we talked about it a lot and decided there was no local bar in Cambridge 
there was no way we could start a family if I was working in London, even with taking time off, which doesn't, didn't at that time bode well at the bar. Mm. And the obvious thing was to do a changeover, which meant that I'd have to do, I'd get exemption for certain subjects, but I'd have to do um, bar, f bar finals. Mm. I didn't have to do part one. And because I'd, own, I'd been at the bar more than five years, I'd been, it would be eight years, um, there was a rule that you didn't have to do uh, solicitor's training, you didn't have articles. Hmm. So it just meant you did the exams and then you were a solicitor. And you had to be debarred. Hmm. So I remember being debarred at my own request in um, and doing my last case in, in the High Court um, in late July and someone sort of uh, raising an eyebrow and saying yes we've heard something Miss Sands as I <laughs> appeared before him and then Judy was born in the September and, and during the time between I, I'd been mugging up for bar exams and at that time it may still be true as long as you did three papers and got through them all first time you could then add the others one by one so I took three that I'd been practicing in family law um, sale of goods and contract or something I can't remember now I know family was one of them and that was easy I got through those three and then I just while I was at home I um, I added the others one by one, just doing a bit of home study and looking after the children. And I, at some time in that period, I started doing some supervision for some of the colleges in family law. And um, <laughs> Derry Irvin gave me his 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 supervision notes mm. Mm. and he was going to LSE so it mm. seemed very um, apposite and so I had students I did about eight hours a week seeing people once a fortnight in twos and mm. threes while we were in St Edward's Passage that was mm. fine because it started there and I went on when we came here for a bit longer until they did come out here I think for a year anyway and then I um, I looked for a part-time job mm. and that was very difficult um, the first <laughs> the first people I asked um, who were uh, um, Hewitts and Hewittsons they are now but they were three names uh, Wild Hewitts and Shaw that's it um, I had a very nice interview with very nice people and they had one the only other left-wing lawyer in Cambridge as far as I knew and he uh, I got to know him very well or I'd known him by then uh, but the senior partner said absolutely no we don't want a woman solicitor and we don't want um, to give up a room for someone who's part-time the next one said can't afford to give very nice man can't afford to keep a room for you or let you have a room if you're working part-time and then I found Tony Hawley um, who I think had been to some of Ken's uh, summer lectures, he'd been at Clare and he'd just taken over a moribund practice uh, called Miller and SJ and something else Miller um, 
that had had a family connection with a firm in London and he was willing to take me on as a tame barrister um, to do the court work. And as I say, uh, said before, we, um, uh, the divorce came to the county court, mm -hmm. so solicitors had, were able to undertake divorces in court mm. and they they were in open court and I knew how to do them I done they were bread and butter things you mm. did mm. you you could do half a dozen ten in a day if you mm. in the high court if you were there I mean you if you got them from you were instructed by people well I never had that many here but um, the funny thing was that um, one of the older solicitors in one of the old firms in town who was on the council of the Law Society thought, ah, well, I shall go and do it. And of course, he'd never sat behind council. He didn't know how to do it. He started off by asking Lee. I wasn't there. I didn't hear this. I've only heard the story. but. He asked leading questions when he shouldn't have done. The judge got irritated. He got things in the wrong order. And all the other solicitors sitting behind counsel listening got terrified and wouldn't do it. And then I came along. I knew the judge because he used to be the judge in South End and Grays. I knew and um, he was also someone who'd seen me in the Bar Theatrical Society. Mm -hmm. He knew I'd been a member of the club. <laughs> so we sailed through and I think that's why I started getting a reputation in mm. Cambridge that mm. I did them and other people didn't and they didn't mm. have to go through two people, mm. a solicitor and a barrister, they could do with them with me. So it was all serendipity and not uh, planned. <laughs> Is that when you joined Millers? I mean, yes, yeah. yeah. And then yeah. you later became a partner, and yes, mm. yes, later became a partner, and then senior partner when mm. in the end. Um, Interesting. You mentioned um, the famous Garden House yeah. affair. Yeah. Can you tell us something about that because yeah. it was a landmark in Cambridge yes. history? Yes. Um, in fact, we were on sabbatical when it, it, it actually happened. Mm. We heard about it in the paper and got back soon after. Um, I found that I had nine people waiting. No, it was more than nine. Um, King's people mostly, almost all King's people. Um, what, what, what happened? Just um, uh, people okay. won't no. know what happened. Of course. Um, it was the time of the Greek colonels. Mm. There'd also been this film shown in Cambridge and elsewhere about the run-up to the takeover by the colonels and the mm. um, awful things that had happened because um, communists were being um, really harried and, mm. uh, harried and um, and it was a, a coup mm. and the Greek government were very keen to start up their tourist industry again after all this chaos that mm. had been going on and they organized through the tourist board um, Greek week in Cambridge and um, one of the travel companies was involved with this and set up a big dinner at the garden house mm. where people paid a lot but there was going to be a lot of uh, stuff about Greece and how mm. wonderful the holidays were and mm. you know come and travel and a lot of people in the university from the top downwards or the bottom upwards were horrified at this and decided to make a peaceful demonstration um, and there was a committee and there were people who were known to be left-wingers and there was this demonstration on the lawns outside the garden house which was invaded by a few anarchists and a few kids and people who 
had heard that there was going to be fun at the garden house and it got totally out of hand with people throwing stones and smashing windows and tables being tipped and a, an awful mess. The proctors, the proctor and the um, bulldogs or whatever mm. they were called, mm. were there and they gave, one of the uh, things that inflamed it even more was they gave names to the police of the people he kn they knew were, you know, well to the left mm. and who'd been making, you know, did n not not violence. It was mm. meant to be violence. A lot of people who were there were really just expressing their disapproval mm. of a dinner in Cambridge for that purpose. And... Um, there were prosecutions, I think there were something like 23 altogether, and there were three firms of solicitors. The one I spoke about, the man from um, Wild Hewitson and Shaw had gone mm. off in his own, and Peter Saw, very nice man, who was a Labour, the, mm. as far as I knew, the only other Labour Party mm. solicitor in town, and a London solicitor, um, Emil. Mm. Um, Barry Emil um, represented three. I had the most for some reason because a lot of them happened to be kings. Mm. Or, yeah, well, there were some kings and some others. And um, they went to the magistrates' court first for committal and we had no case to answer for some of them, including one against whom nobody had said anything and nobody had seen him there, he was there, but nobody had um, noticed him doing anything other than stand there. Mm. And I found out afterwards that um, what had happened was that they'd seen somebody on the roof and someone had called out oh that's young so-and-so and it was his younger brother who was only about 15 mm. had you know been with a a few lads mm. joining in the fun and they'd heard the name and thought it was the older brother because mm. they didn't know about the younger brother and he was he was pulled in i mean mm. extraordinary the Proctor's got a lot of... Um, you weren't around then, were you? In what the date was it? 19, 1970. Yes, yeah, it was the year before I came. Mm. Mm. Anyway, it um, got... So we got some of them out, but then it went to the um, Assizes and they wouldn't have it in Cambridge. Mm. So they had it in um, Hartford. Mm. And the judge who was appointed to sit was um, <laughs> lived in a house called Truncheons, was known to be very anti uh, students and mm. people rioting. Well, he, mm. he, uh, anybody doesn't want riots mm. but he was very severe I, the first bit of the name's gone it's something Stevenson Mel, Mel, I know it well Mel, Melford Stevenson Melford, thank you Melford Stevenson yeah. dreadful that I couldn't get that <laughs> sorry and uh, and he um directed the jury. I mean, a lot of people from here came down to Hartford and mm. listened, and I was there all the time. Uh, um, we had people like um, a chap who became... We had Bob Rothorn, of course. Mm. We had... Um, names are going to mm. escape me again. Mm. man who became president of Queen's was one of my witnesses. Mm. And he launched out at uh, senior members as well. 
the evil influence of dons or mm. some mm. words I've got the mm. thing it, it, it was awful and um, we had to go to appeal and we got we got I used to go down and visit my king's people in Wormwood scrubs taking them cigarettes How, what was the maximum uh, sentence they got Rod Caird, who wasn't one of mine, got three years, I think. Mm, seems out of all proportion. Out of all proportion. Um, he had been, in the end, the only people who, who were convicted had something else other than being there. Mm. Rod Caird, I think, was holding a stick. No, maybe that was our chap, Williams, but he... He got a year in in youth mm -hmm. uh, detention, whatever it was then called, and um, there was one other, Brian Williams, who'd had a sentence, had had mole fuse, uh, mole fuse in his pocket, which he said someone had given him, and he he just put it in his pocket because he didn't mm -hmm. know what to do with it. Thing that big green bit thicker than a cigarette mm. um, and uh, he came out on appeal and uh, two of them had deportation orders he was South African and the other one was um, South American Argentinian I think mm. medical student Badia perhaps anyway they they um, It got into the law reports mm -hmm. and um, and gave birth to the law surgery which we ran in Cambridge for many years mm -hmm. with people like Bob Heppel and Ken was um, and myself and David Pearl Pe mm -hmm. law lawyers the mm -hmm. the lawyers around the place. Mm -hmm. Um, so something good came out of it. Something good came out of it. Mm, how depressing. Mm. Well, we're just getting towards the end of the, the tape. And, um, I've talked so too long. I wanted no, to tell you about Rudy Duchka. That, that's the only well, other thing. <laughs> yes, tell me about Rudy Duchka. Well, Rudy Duchka was the uh, chap in, in Berlin who was mm. shot in the head and yes. came here for medical treatment. He was um, um, supposed to be a left-wing... Oh, he was. Um, he wasn't a member of the Bader Meinhof or anything. But no, he, but no, he, no. That came after. But he was quite uh, left. No, he, he. It was another demonstration, mm -hmm. and there were people like um, uh, we had. They set up this special tribunal. Mm -hmm. the, the change from Maudling had let him in for medical treatment and then McLeod who said well that's finished um, Pippard at Clare Hall had mm -hmm. offered him um, to do a PhD here mm -hmm. and he'd applied to do that and they didn't um, he was that was something different from the, what he'd been admitted for so they wanted to turn him out special tribunal only time it sat, uh, pr the case presented by the Attorney General, Peter Rawlinson, and we had Michael Foote, all sorts of witnesses mm. Mm. about it, um, but he got thrown out. Did he? Because he was somehow associated with Kings, I think, as well at some point. Bob Young mm. was very mm. much involved. Um, mm. involved. Mm. It was Bob Young who brought him to me, I think. Mm. So he was sent back to Germany? No, no, he he couldn't go back to Germany. He he had a bullet in his head, I mean, mm. you know, there was... Uh, so what happened? Um, Denmark took him on and he went to Ar Aarhus. Mm. And he died a few years later. He no, had a wife and children here, they were at Clare Hall. Mm. Mm. Um, you know, with residents. And were you representing him? Or? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And mm. I used the same team mm. as I'd used in the garden house. What was he like? It was shortly a, after. As a person? 
he seemed extremely nice and his mm. wife was nice. I mean, you know, um, politically, he couldn't totally disengage and people did come to visit him, but there were all sorts of things about what, how they were collecting evidence. Mm. And there was a day, and this was unprecedented, when not only we were not allowed to hear the evidence, but nor was counsel, nor were the solicitors, nor was he. So we never knew what was said against him. Secret trials, and that was the beginning. That was <laughs> the beginning. And I, I wonder that nobody mentioned it since, because recently they've been talking about how wrong it is, or how right it is for oh. to exclude Yes, exactly. This was the precedent. Is there anything else that you would really like to have been asked about, or your children, or...? Um, uh, children have been a joy. Uh, you mentioned them, and having yeah. them, and yeah. what, are, what are they doing? Um, one's working at um, one of the village colleges, mm. not, not actually teaching, though she does. She trained as a journalist and uh, her scope has been rather limited since because of living in Cambridge. Mm. Uh, she, so she now, she did work for the Cambridge News for many years. Um, and the others stopped her um, doing, bringing up a couple of children and um, doing part-time GP, part-time, a bit of university. Mm. teaching mm. oh well I think on a nice family note we'll end there thank you very much indeed Rosemary